Back in March, I made a TikTok video that happened to do well on the fraction of TikTok that is called Witch Talk. This then algorithmically exposed me to modern witch culture, which has then become the inspiration for this video. That is the short story. The slightly longer story, if you want to indulge me, is this. I stitched a video responding to the claim that medieval witch iconography was villainized by papal and patriarchal intention of disenfranchising entrepreneurial female brewers of beer. For example, the stereotypical witch hat, broom, and cauldron were simply the tools of female medieval brewers. I neither then nor now could speak to the validity of this history of witch iconography, though I do find it doubtful. However, this reminded me that in college I read a very dense academic text, though very intriguing one, on how medieval England's ale-brewing economy was heavily female-dominated, but was supplanted by male-dominated economy of beer-brewing within about 200 years. I sincerely thought this was extremely niche content, and I wouldn't say it went viral, but perhaps caused a little bit of a sneeze. This happens to have also been interesting to you, I will also link that series down below. While my series didn't really have anything to do with witches explicitly, the video that I stitched brought a lot of witch talk viewers over to my video who subsequently commented and because of their activity on my video I was algorithmically pulled into and an exposure to modern witch culture. I'm gonna pause here to say that the reason this impacted me is because in my reading I had already started to notice this abstract gathering of some books that didn't seem to have a reason that my mind was grouping them together, that they, there seemed to be some similarities, yet while they were very different, modern witch culture is hard to define, but some of the characteristics that you can distill out of this community seem to be the connecting thread I was failing to grasp was actually the common ground in these novels. Characteristics that I would identify as part of the modern witch movement are in some part drawing on historical inspiration, but also feel very grounded in modern feminism. To me there is an imagination if not outright projection that medieval witches possess some kind of concept of modern feminism. Characterized by a kind of ostracization and outcast nature of the medieval witch that is then feared for the way she is not conforming to society. Modern interpretation being very anti-patriarchal and even anti-establishment in ways that are finding self-sufficiency out of dependency on the predominantly normative social structures, such as connection to nature and healing through nature, healing through spiritual means that are non-Christian, rather pagan. I believe there's a sense that women accused of witchcraft in the past actually possessed characteristics that we would by today's standards consider female power. There are many ways that I think this is a very interesting modern cultural and social phenomenon, this sort of modern witch movement, but I don't intend to dissect any further. Instead, I now want to move to the books, and I hope you pardon my long preamble, but as I mentioned, I had been reading many books that I think had possessed this abstract quality that I couldn't quite put my finger on, and modern witch culture illuminated to me that what I was seeing was this projection into oftentimes historical fiction of modern feminist ideologies. And while I think strictly speaking there's an argument that this is historically, philosophically, and ideologically anachronistic, I think there's still a reason why this seems to work really well in these historical novels. And I think it could even be considered a form of literarily reclaiming female history, and I'm definitely on board for that. And now the moment you've been waiting for, I want to share with you these books that I think possess what I'm going to call a witch vibe. So let's just get into it. And the first book that I have to talk about is The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. This is a historical fiction novel taking place across three different timelines for three different women, medieval, 1950s, and modern. It takes place in coastal Scotland and is very dreary and cold and rainy in atmosphere, a bit gothic in aesthetic as well, with a sprinkle in of the supernatural, which really brings out that witchy vibe. All of these women don't quite conform to their society properly, and this isn't necessarily empowering for them, it actually demonstrates a lot of struggle. 
There's also a theme in this book examining violence against women and trigger warning for that. I believe the intention of the author is to demonstrate how historically and systemically violence against women has evolved and their vulnerability. It's also very beautifully written, I would recommend it, and I even have a full video review of this book if you want a little bit more of a taste before diving in. The next book I have to recommend is Burial Rights by Hannah Kent. This is based on the real story of a woman named Agnes in Iceland in 1830 who was convicted of murdering her employer when she was his servant. She's sentenced to house arrest to stay in the family home of a local small town government leader and is being prepared for her execution by a clergyman. Agnes is very socially ostracized and people treat her with this sort of fear of supernatural ability that if they get too close to her that she will trick them into letting her go. She also has a craft and knowledge of healing with nature and she has this attitude of sort of being resigned to her fate with this awareness of the systemic disadvantages of her gender and class, which has resulted in a premature conviction. I think this book interestingly walks the line of sometimes portraying Agnes with stereotypical witch characteristics while never outrightly labeling herself. This next recommendation is very similar to Burial Right is Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. This is the only book on this list that I haven't actually read, though I have watched the Netflix adaptation of this, which was produced by Margaret Atwood, and having read other work from Margaret Atwood, I think I think this will be a disturbing treat. Grace is an Irish immigrant to Canada sometime in the 1800s and likewise has been convicted of murdering her employer as a servant. However, unlike her alleged accomplices, she has not been executed on plea of insanity, saying that she does not remember the event of the crime. Instead, she is institutionalized, and I believe this account we received from an alienist who was interviewing her. I believe Atwood identifies as a humanist rather than a feminist. However, in addition to examination of treatment of mental health during this time, I think there's also an exploration of many feminist themes. And I anticipate there being a complex conversation about the need to contextualize Grace's alleged behavior within the historical and social context of the vulnerability and systemic vulnerability of Grace's class and gender. Well, I don't know for sure yet, I anticipate that this book will pass the witchy vibe check. Next, a bit of a curveball with Circe by Madeline Miller. This book, of course, takes us to ancient Greece, which might not be the first place your mind wanders when considering witch culture and history, but of course, Circe is the goddess of witches. This book has often been called a feminist retelling of the myth of Circe, who was cast out and ostracized from the rest of the gods to her own island. She, as a goddess, does possess some supernatural abilities, which if I remember correctly, seem to be along the lines of healing. Circe also cultivates the fauna and herbs of her little island, which she uses for healing purposes. We meet Circe in other novels, such as the Odyssey, when Odysseus and his men are stranded on her island. What is feminist about this retelling is that it often recontextualizes Circe's deviant and mischievous behavior, particularly towards men, within her perspective where she's often been the victim of male power and aggression. This might be a good recommendation for someone who already knows they like witchy vibe books, but has primarily consumed them in the Western European historical setting. This is a bit different, but definitely still kind of has that vibe to it. The last book I want to share with you is one of my all-time favorites, but before I do, I want to give a honorable mention to a book that doesn't quite fit all of the boxes of my very vague witchy vibe definition, and yet I still think it somehow possesses some of that energy, and this is Morvern Caller by Alan Warner. This book is not a historical fiction, which might be the biggest culprit for why I think this doesn't quite fit that vibe. It was published in 1995 and takes place in Scotland, where a woman finds her boyfriend dead on her kitchen floor. He has killed himself, and rather than responding in a typical manner, she lights a cigarette and goes off to work, leaving him there. This woman seems to deviate normative behavior in almost every case, and this isn't oftentimes presented as empowering so much as very frustrating, because sometimes her behavior is inexplicably not in her best interest, and, and yet I think where that witch vibe comes in for me is that she's very self-determinative. She is living for her own fulfillment and sustaining her own interests, even when those seem to be somewhat short-sighted and juvenile. It is very odd, yet if a chaotically independent, though not quite empowered female character 
sounds interesting to you, it could be worth a go. The last book I have to share with you, which is truly a favorite of mine, is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell, which I actually have purchased, but shipping being the catastrophe that it is right now, it has still not arrived. Anyway, this is the story of a woman named Agnes, who is married to William Shakespeare. Historically, we typically know of Shakespeare's wife as Anne Hathaway, but the author uses the name Agnes, which there is historical precedence for. Shakespeare is actually a very peripheral character in this book, even never being mentioned directly by name, though of course we know it, that it is him in this book. But this book isn't just about Agnes, it's also about their son Hamnet, who gets sick from the plague. If you ever have the chance to go to Stratford-on-Avon and visit Anne Hathaway's house, you will see that they are surrounded by absolutely gorgeous gardens, which have been kept cultivated with historically accurate herbs that would have been growing in Anne's gardens. In Hamnet, Agnes is very involved in her garden, knows her herbs, and is very connected to nature. She goes out to the woods alone to have all of her children, as this feels more natural to her. People in the community come to her for healing solutions and potions, but she's also very ostracized from the community, both for reasons of having a very secluded family history and now and then being married to a very successful husband that is always gone in London, which is also a reason that she's very independent and self-sufficient. Agnes certainly has an energy of existing outside of her community in a way that seems suggestive that she characterizes more modern feminist behaviors, and this makes her a very interesting character to read. But my favorite part of this book is simply how beautifully lyrical and elegant the writing is, and it is an exquisite joy to read. There are many other reasons that this is one of my favorite books, and I hope to reread it again soon and make a more in-depth review of why. I really love this book, but in the meantime, I can give you a hearty recommendation. This is very worth your time and definitely passes the witchy vibe check. And that concludes my very specific and niche recommendation video. If you have grasped my elusive and abstract concept of witch vibe and then in turn have some recommendations for me suitable to this subject, I would love them. If not, go down there and say hello anyway, and I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in another video. Bye!